When you think of this particular cohort, this was the group of people who didn't take on debt, right? They were kind of, you know, raised in the financial crisis, so they didn't take out a lot of debt. This is the we don't own generation. But what we've seen, particularly as the economy has been good for the past decade, they've taken on more and more debt. So for this group, it's really surprising to see the delinquencies rise, in part because they didn't used to take on so much debt in the first place. And Ted, what does it tell us about overall credit card usage, especially among this age group? Yeah, credit card usage is up, and you want to be in that 40% of cardholders who are paying your bills in full every month. Oh, yeah. I think this calls to mind this sort of all news is local thing because a lot of households are doing great. There's already a lot of households that are debt free. Mm -hmm. The Fed says the overall debt to income ratio is at its lowest point since 1980. So there's a lot wow. of people doing well. But there are more people falling behind on their bills. What do we with, know about those people? I mean, well, with interest rates going up, I think that's really what's driving a lot of this, is that the average credit card rate now is 18%, and that's for people with good credit. If you have lesser credit, you're paying more like 20 even 25%. And this is tied in with the Fed series of rate hikes. So it's really important to make your personal credit card rate zero with a balance transfer or paying in full. Oh, amen to that. Dan, is this the same? So especially the, this cohort that's under stress and, and falling behind on these balances, is this the same cohort that would be dealing with a lot of student debt? Because we saw, obviously, yeah. this splashy move by Robert Smith to pay off the debt of Morehouse grads. Is solving that issue something that solves the, the delinquency issue or, or, or no? Are those different, different groups of the population? It's largely the same group, uh, and, and it solves part of it, I guess. You know, so I spoke uh, last night with uh, David Thomas, who's the president of Morehouse, and asked him, you know, I said, look, Robert Smith's offered to get rid of the college debt of those people who are graduating, but what if they have other financial needs, maybe more pressing financial needs with that money? And his response was, in part, that what getting rid of the student debt in their case allows them to do is make different choices. It just gives them a lot more flexibility than they would otherwise have. And that, and that kind of goes through, right? Are you going to start a business if you've got a ton of student debt? Are you maybe going to take a higher risk job or even lower paying mm -hmm. job if you have that much debt? You won't. So, so what Smith did was highlight a pretty big problem. Yeah, and Ted, I've always talked about how I got a, a great start because I was able to take on an internship when I graduated. I was debt free, and otherwise I would have felt the pressure maybe to take a different, more secure but less attractive job. So do you know much about the overlap between the falling behind on your credit cards and having high student loan debt? I mean, should we assume that that is a pretty solid relationship or no? I would separate them just because I think student loan debt is a good debt in the sense that you're building skills, you're hopefully building wealth in the long run, and the interest rates are a lot lower. Credit card debt is really hard to get out of because with that average rate, about 18%, we found more than half of people who have credit card debt have been in debt for more than a year, and 37% have been in debt for at least two years. And these are people who are just trying to make ends meet. You know, most people didn't get into credit card debt because they were irresponsible. Mm. For most people, it was day-to-day -day expenses or some sort of emergency.